I survived the nightmare. But did I really do the right thing? I don't know what is real anymore. My face is weak, and I feel a dark shadow over me. This will be my greatest test of faith yet. God have mercy on my soul. So in the last video we talked about the first half of chapter 2 and all things Snake Meadow Hill Church and Sister Bell. But now I want to go through and discuss the rest of chapter 2 and more importantly John's mental state. The alternate ending that we can get, how to get it and then the big question of this chapter, did any of it actually happen? Now why do I ask this? Well because no matter what ending you get after the final boss battle with Miriam Bell it cuts to John waking up in his bed, with multiple endings using the word nightmare specifically, thus implying that none of what we saw actually happened. This would make a lot of sense given what we saw happen to John, for starters turning into a demon, stabbing himself in the eye and luring children to their doom, just to name a few. Before we get into that let's just pick up where we left off before as John read a very interesting news article and became part of a cult ritual that turned him into a demon of which you then run around passing some people on the bridge before turning back into a human on the other side and entering the creepy candy tunnels which as we learned from the notes were used by the cult to move around the area more easily without being seen. Initially we are led to believe this was the home of the candy store killer who lured victims to these tunnels to kill them. As we progress through however one of the last notes tells us that there was no candy store killer at all and that what they the policeman in this note in particular were dealing with was not human it was likely a lie fabricated by the cult to hide their demon activities it also made for an easy way to find people to use in ritualistic activities as there would often be people living in the tunnels a few more great sequences with the torch layer i love this part of the game by the way i thought it was really clever have led us to what appears to be the lair of the unspeakable demon the reason why I say this is that once you get there and fight Sister Belle in the final battle with the help of Father Garcia, the last shot you see is of the demon showing its true self to John, and this is really important and let me break down why. Let's go with the premise that this is a nightmare that John's having, and John's mental state has not been the same since that fateful night on September 21st 1986 when he failed to save Amy, Father Allred and Amy's parents. The notes help us piece together a timeline of what happened after that date, starting with John's note to his wife Karen back in chapter 1. Karen, the church might contact you in a few days to tell you their version of what happened to me. I want you to hear it from me first. A year ago I was involved in the exorcism of Amy Martin. What they said in the papers about what happened isn't true. She killed my superior, Father Allred, with her bare hands. When I confronted her, she escaped managed to cut the power to the house and strangled her own parents with their own intestines. I have to go back to that house. The nightmares I'm having are real. She's still there, waiting for me. I can still help her. If I don't come back, know that I love you and I'm sorry, John. The focus of this note is the quote, the nightmares I'm having are real. This may tell us that chapter 2 is one of many vivid and lucid dreams that John is having about the cult but perhaps what he is seeing may well be real in some form or another. As a dream showed him that Amy was waiting for him back at the house, maybe chapter 2 is the cult showing John just how powerful they truly are. Also a little tidbit, the note from Karen at the end of the game is clearly in response to this note from a year ago. Anyways, back to the timeline. After John escaped the house in 1986, the police either caught up to him or the Catholic Church or the cult opted to inform the relevant authorities about John and the Martin family deaths and John was then admitted to Yale Psychiatric Institute where he was under the watch and care of Dr. James Spinal. I'm going with Spinal. The first half an hour of John being there was him discussing what happened which led them to declare John was not sound of mind. A note from the confession booth goes on to state that John is suffering from delusion, playing the part of a hero and that the cult and demons are the result of his mind inventing them to hide the guilt he has for his actions. But the next part of the note really caught my eye. 
and for the love of God, please have Miss Martin transferred to another facility. Somehow, John knows that she is in here with him. I think this is huge, and I think it will be huge for chapter three too. John and Amy were both admitted to Yale Psychiatric Institute and they were both there at the same time. I think we will see more flashbacks of that if the trailer for chapter three is anything to go by. The next two notes of John in the Institute are dated strangely though. Um, by that I mean that in one for October the 31st, Dr. Spinal releases John from his care and seemingly from the Institute as well. But then the note that you get for being the secret boss in chapter one is dated the 30th of December 1986, which is John requesting to be released. So I'm not sure about that exactly. But anyway, I think if they were dated the other way around, it would make more sense, but that's just me. In any case, it seems that around sort of January 1987, is when John is definitely out of the Institute. But from then on, it's not known what he does from January to September. In one of the chapter one ending notes, it stated that Amy had been missing after escaping from whatever mental institution she had been moved from only nine days prior to the events of chapter one. So September 12th, 1987. Chapter 1 only happened and John only returned to that house after he was having these nightmares. So, by having the nightmare of Chapter 2 as a whole, John was perhaps able to get that same feeling that something bad was going to happen and thus Chapter 3 will take place in more concrete reality like Chapter 1. So, whilst I understand some people's maybe annoyance at the fact that chapter two was seen as like an entire waste almost because it didn't happen but i think that because we found we we know that john was having nightmares prior to chapter one john had to have these nightmares again potentially for chapter three to take place i know he got the notes from father garcia um, about the profane sabbath and stuff like that but i still think he, these nightmares help John realise what he needs to do but also I do think there are a number of themes that we can take from chapter 2 and that perhaps they tell us how John is feeling and how his mental and emotional state is at that time and I'd like to start with Sister Bell and Snake Meadow Hill Church now I don't think it's a coincidence that the nightmare chapter that we have had John go up against a demon that is posing as a nun in a church. I think that was a clever way on the developer's part to tell us how John feels about the church that he believes in so strongly. I think it's fair to assume that the cult, at least in John's mind, have so much power that they have infiltrated the church and his superiors to the point where he can't even trust them. Thus the whole name of the game being Faith, John's Faith, and how it is being tested by the cult. I just realized I do a lot of theory videos on cults. Anyway, the unspeakable demon showing himself to John and that waking him up from his nightmare is a reflection of John's faith and how the cult is trying to show him that his faith in God and the church is misguided. John is battling reality. As stated in one of the ending quotes, he doesn't know what is real anymore and saving the twins is John's way of redemption for failing to save Amy and his soul at the same time. But speaking of Amy, remember in the other video where I said that Amy is alive because we saw her in chapter two? Well, I'm pretty sure that I was certainly wrong on that one and it's relatively easy to deduce. Not least with John stating, I've finished my work with Amy, but also because that was the nightmare and she wasn't really there. The only time we see her funny enough in chapter two was when there is a ritual taking place it's John losing faith if you like and becoming a part of the cult this does lead me to think that she definitely died after escaping the house in chapter one which then calls into question the true ending of chapter one a little but maybe not because it kind of makes more sense that John actually then shoots her, he then gets caught by the police, but rather than going to prison, they deem him sort of mentally unwell, and he goes to Yale Psychiatric Institute.
but then what happens to Michael if he doesn't die and get run over in chapter 1? Too many questions. Too many questions. It is likely that she just escaped the house and died of her wounds from the battle that John had with her. I think that's, I think that's what we can safely theorise at this stage. But moving on, I want to explore the initiation ending of chapter 2 because it's really cool, it requires multiple tasks and says a lot about John's fears. To achieve this ending, you are directed to it by the note found on the Save family tomb. Dearest disciple, verily not everyone who says Lucifer, Lucifer shall inherit his kingdom. You must first conjure his demon. You must then serve his demon. You must then walk among the children of men as his demon. Thus shall you receive the blessing of the unspeakable. Return to the safe family tomb whenever you are needed rest. Carry. So as you conjure his demon, you have to, once stabbing yourself in the eye with the key in the save room, walk back to the start of the game where you just appeared and create a pentagram using the blood from your eye and defeat the demon that comes out. Then later on in the church, you have to take one of the children that never escaped or died in the cornfield and take them with you into the church and offer it to the demon. Then after that, once you are turned into a demon, you then have the opportunity to kill the two people on the road, after which you are then able to access the secret note found in the inner sanctum, which is the name of the sort of ending area where you have the final battle. I just call it sort of the unspeakable's lair, but it's the inner sanctum, which is beyond the candy tunnels. Uh, and that note, secret note, states from the cult, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We shall visit thee soon. Which confirms that you've got the initiation ending. But also the battle with Sister Belle at the end is also slightly different. With her looking more sort of ragged and, and slightly bigger. I think it's showing the unspeakable is breaking out of her, I, I guess. But after the fight, and once you get back to John's house and you go outside the back doors open so you can go out to the back you see all the cult members standing there and John gets a visit from the unspeakable and then it shows John's bleeding eyes because he is receiving the blessing of the unspeakable which again is to do with his eyes and his mind and his soul having been opened to the wonders of the unspeakable and the cult and he can now see the world and reality what they believe it to be. I'm also dying to know what are in those rooms that John will not go into. I'm really curious, I have absolutely no idea what are in those rooms, but I, I just want to know. I just want to know. Maybe he took Amy there, I don't know. This chapter was all about John's faith, and despite it all seemingly being a nightmare, you can take so much from this chapter, which also sets up chapter 3, as I stated before. John has these nightmares, but they help him understand what he needs to do if he chooses the right path within the dream. The true ending shows us this, that by saving Father Garcia and stopping the unspeakable in the final battle, whilst being a dream, it's telling us that John is choosing the path of faith. He is, as you say, going forth with faith. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really love talking about this game. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to chapter 3. I hope you guys are too. I will be playing it as soon as it drops. I still don't know exactly when. If you want me to do a, maybe like a what we can expect from chapter 3 video, let me know in the comments. Thanks again guys and I'll see you around.